Hello and assalamualaikum, it's your girl Najira P. Welcome back to another video. So as I'm sure you can tell by the title, we're doing something new, we're doing something different, we're mixing it up. Welcome to episode one of Televised Tuesdays. Now, this is a segment that I used to do on my Instagram where every week or every other week on Tuesdays, sometimes I think I would do like six o'clock, seven o'clock, whatever, I would be watching a show, be watching a movie, whatever, and I would be pretty much, in the same way that people like live tweet, I would be talking about it on my story live. And I really loved that and I really enjoyed it. My audience really loved it, my audience really enjoyed it. So I was like, I have to find a way to bring that back, but better. I would love to do the whole, which you know people have suggested, watch the movie live, comment live, whatever, whatever. But I want these to live somewhere. And to be honest, I am a very annoying, <laughs> if I may say so myself, movie and show watcher. Like anything that is more than an hour, I want an intermission. I need to pause it. I need to get a snack. I need to use the bathroom. I need to stretch. I need to watch something else. I need to do something else. That's the kind of girl that I am. So I was like, nobody wants to watch me watch it live. As you can see, we got our new... We got some new equipment because I was like, well, if we're going to do it, we really got to do it. So we got a mic. Okay, we got a mic. We, 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 we trying to get professional. But I don't want to take up too much time. Let's jump right into it. So as I'm sure you've seen from the title, from the thumbnail, we are talking about the newest season, season six of Love is Blind. It's a mess, girl. It's I'm not even going to sit here and pretend like... Everything is coochie, coochie, peachy, peachy. It's a mess. So let's get right into it. For the girls that don't know, let me give you some context. Love is Blind is an experimental show on Netflix where I don't think it's a certain amount, but they bring a bunch of women, a bunch of men. There's a woman's side, there's a men's side. They meet in the pods. So within the course of four weeks, these men and women meet in the pods. Um, they cannot see each other. They have no physical descriptors. All they have is the things that they talk about. And within the span of four weeks, they need to meet, they need to connect, they need to get engaged, and then ultimately they end up getting married. It's an experiment of, is love actually blind? So jumping right into it, episode one. Episode one starts out, um, we get to see a bunch of people, there are a bunch of people that we're going to see throughout the season, and there are a bunch of people that are very pretty, very interesting, very nice characters that we are never going to see again and these are the people where I'm like these might be the ones to prove that love is blind like why are we not seeing them but of course production especially when we talk about Netflix everything is drama 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 issues drama issues drama so they can't show anybody that's too good but I'm not gonna lie I haven't watched the show since season one so I'm only watching season one and season six so I don't know what happened in all those other seasons, maybe it was connecting. So episode one, we meet a bunch of people. They don't give it a long time. We jump right into seeing everybody in the pods. So first people that we meet, Trevor and Chelsea. Trevor is your stereotypical juice head, got a mullet, white guy. But from that first meeting in the pod, he's sweet. Chelsea, she's a flight attendant. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor and Chelsea have a moment. Trevor comes in. Well, Trevor's in the pot. Chelsea comes in. She's like, hey, how are you? He's like, hey, what's your name? She's like, Chelsea. He's like, oh, my dog's name is Chelsea. Okay. What that got to do with me? And then she's like, oh, what's your name? And he's like, Trevor. And she's like, oh, my dog's name is Trevor. You know, for white people, like, that means they're meant to be. Like, they're taking that to heart. They're going all the way with that. So then after that, Chelsea ends up connecting with a guy named Jimmy. Jimmy, to describe him best, looks exactly like Jimmy Pesto from Bob's Burgers. And I'm not even saying that to be funny, because life imitates art. He looks exactly and he talks exactly, and I feel like he acts like uh, Jimmy Pesto from Bob's Burgers. So Chelsea and Jimmy ended up connecting um, Jimmy asks Chelsea, like, oh, you know, what do you do? She's like, oh, I'm a flight attendant and I'm a wedding, you know, I'm an event planner. And he's like, oh, so you can plan our wedding? Can we relax? Jimmy, can we calm down? 
God. Okay. Then after that, we're moving on. Jimmy ends up connecting with a girl named Jessica. Jessica, when I think of her, lip fillers. She has some very interesting lip fillers. After that, we are introduced to, I feel like, one of the most peculiar men I've ever seen on a dating show. And that says a lot because I've watched some dating shows. Matthew. Matthew is 36 years old and life has hardened him, to say the very least. He's weird, he's awkward, and to be honest, he's quite disrespectful. So the first person he ends up in a pod with is a, it was Jessica. So he comes in there with Jessica, and Jessica's very like cheerful. She's like, hey, how are you? He's like, hi, I have a set of 15 questions. Pick a number and I'll ask you a question. Are you all right? Is, is everything okay? Do we need to call someone? very weird very peculiar wasn't a big fan of him at all um Jessica is just like uh okay so after that Matthew ends up in the pod with another wonderful young lady named Sarah Ann so when he asks Sarah Ann this um she's kind of taken aback but she answers the question whatever but she's like oh you know well you know can you answer the question as well he's like oh I was just here just to ask what but that's really how men act that is exactly how men act mind you while sarah ann is literally answering his question he walks out of the room like literally gets up and leaves the room because she's talking about her answer after that he ends up with amber he ends up with amber um this is the first time that we see him show any sort of kindness he tells amber oh you sound really sweet like you sound like you have a good voice whatever whatever amber is like oh, okay great thanks so finally we really see a breakthrough with matthew when he meets up with ad ad beautiful black girl um former cheerleader former dancer she's cheerful she's giddy she's happy she's loving she's all of the things and he has a breakthrough where he's talking to her he's like oh i'm not good at dating i'm not good at first link ups whatever whatever she's like oh my god Matthew, I think you're going to surprise me. Not really. Not really. We don't we don't expect much. I don't expect much from Matthew. And then we move past that and AD, our beautiful black queen, ends up linking up with Clay. Black man, super suave, super cute. We finally have our black love moment. Um they're kicking it, they're talking it. As soon as he walks in the room, She's like, hey, my name is A.D. He's like, A.D.? All day? All day? If a black man don't do nothing else, they're going to establish intimacy by immediately giving you a nickname. <laughs> immediately giving you a nickname. He's like, A.D. All day? All day? Um, but they're kicking it. They're cool. He's cool. He seems like a very, not really Rico Suave. He's more so like he's trying to play cool, but you can tell he's excited. You can tell he's giddy. And I liked him. I liked his energy. I thought he was funny. I thought he was cute. After that, uh, who do we have a link up between? We have Johnny and Amy. Johnny reminds me of Prince Charming from Shrek. He has like that kind of hairdo going on. He's like the, you know, kind of guy, but he's funny. He's goofy. He's fun. Amy, we got a little bit of, okay, a little bit of arroz con pollo. We finally got a, a, a Latina. Amy, she's sweet, she's nice, they click up, they have something nice going on, they have some chemistry, they're looking cute. After that, we're getting AD with Clay again. Like, love is blind, as soon as they establish that something works, they're going to run it into the ground. So we have a link up with AD and Clay again. The only thing that I'm really concerned about, why Clay ain't got no shoes on? He ain't got no shoes, he ain't got no socks. Now mind you, they go into the pods, they're in there for what I'm assuming is a cool minute. So you want to take your shoes off? Cool. Why you ain't got no socks on? Why is you, why is you touching on your feet, Clay? I, 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 I just can't do that. I can't do that. But for their second link up, AD and Clay, um, it's getting cringe, to, to be honest. I'm, I'm very cringed by it. But whatever they're cool he makes a nasty joke he's like oh my god i wish i was cuddling with you she's like oh my god i wish i was cuddling with you too let's pump the brakes and i say this as a lover girl 
who it only takes, you know, a good couple links for me to say, that's my boo-boo stink stink. But this is a lot, y'all. This is a lie. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. So we see Matthew with AD um, again. And AD is like, oh, yeah, I just know, you know, with Matthew, I have to crack that shell open. And, you know, he needs some time and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like this is a trap that a lot of women fall into. If you as a man are not already prepared to let your walls down, to let somebody in, to be vulnerable, to be transparent... When I have nothing to talk about, I'm not cracking no shelves. I'm not breaking out no walls. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not going to be a construction worker in order to get close to you. So it's either you ready to be vulnerable, you ready to take the risk, or we ain't got nothing to talk about, to be honest. Um, but Matthew is already confessing his love. But what Matthew was saying to AD, mind you, this is apparently... According to the cameras, this is only their second link. And Matthew was saying to AD, oh, the things I'm saying to you... I'm not saying to anybody else. I'm not saying to anybody else. Remember that, y'all. Um, we see a link up between Jimmy and Jessica again. Jimmy also weirdly re resembles Mr. Incredible. So that's very interesting. Him and Jessica are also linking up. They're confessing a lot of love. They're saying a lot of, you're so special to me. I feel so strongly about you, blah, 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 blah. I love a good delusion. I love, and I can say for every time that I've been delusional, that man was delusional right with me. And it just, something about it that just makes it so sweet when both of you are delusional. That makes it so lovely. Um, so we get past them. But again, okay, we got Jimmy and Jessica. They're really connecting. They're feeling all the things. Jessica slips up and calls Jimmy her husband. This is episode one, y'all. And Jessica's like, oh my God, my husband. Then Jimmy links up again with Chelsea. They start talking about past relationships. Um, they start talking about the fact that Chelsea was married. She is a divorced woman and she used to be married for five years. Jimmy doesn't respond well. And you can see... He's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's not a big deal. Well, you know, that's not a problem. Well, you know, it's it's no really big deal. It's, it's no problem. You can see on his face, it is a problem. So, okay, Jimmy has Jessica and he has Chelsea. But also, who else wants Chelsea? Trevor. Our favorite juice head, Trevor. They get into past relationships. Um, they start talking about family, different things like that. And Trevor asked Chelsea, like, hey, like, what's the closest you've gotten to marriage? And she was like, well, I've been married before. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, Chelsea gonna say, didn't I tell you that? Oh my God, didn't I? Didn't I tell you? Girl, you know you ain't tell Trevor that you had been married before. You know for a fact you did not tell that to Trevor. But Trevor takes it very well. Trevor's a grown man about it. He's like, girl... I do not care. I do not care at all. Okay. So again, we got Clay and AD. We show them again. Uh, this is where it takes a turn with Clay and AD. Again, the whole premise of the experiment is that love is blind. So we're supposed to be getting to know each other, vibing, getting engaged, really connecting with no physicalities involved. So no body, no touching, no rubbing, no hugging. I don't even see what you look like. So I can't even use your looks to judge if you're a person that I want to get to. If you're a person that I want to get to know. Clay basically asks her, basically demands for AD to describe herself. He's like, I just, you know, I don't see myself being engaged to somebody unless, you know, I'm fully aware of their looks. So why did you come on a show called Love is Blind? Clay was basically like, love may be blind, but I'm not. So I need to know what that booty do. Clay, AD becomes very upset, as she should, because why would you come on here if you weren't really prepared for love to be blind? So she's basically like, boy, I'm not doing that. Whatever, whatever. Like, I'm not into it. They end on a bad note. Matthew, 
and AD are connected once again. This is how we end episode one. Matthew and AD connect again. Um, and I can see from this, he's using his very stereotypical modes of manipulation that people normally do. So he's like, oh, I know you're making other connections here. I, you know, I'm not saying this stuff to anybody else. He's buttering her up, but basically trying to guilt her into being with him, but he's not establishing a real proposal. Nothing, but he's like, oh, you know, I'll leave with you right now. AD's, another part of AD's story is that her father passed away. So he's like, oh, that's not a roadblock, but I definitely still want to meet your family and ask for your permission, for their permission for your hand in marriage, all these other things all these other things but the real kicker he asked ad before their meeting ends before their time in the pod ends are you going to tell anybody what i said to you today booyaka if you want to talk about a red flag baby he got six of them he got six of them and he's finna take you on a roller coaster ride he's finna take you on a roller coaster ride he, why are you worried about what she's going to tell somebody else? Why are you worried about that? Why are you worried about that? So episode one ends with basically Amber. Remember our girl Amber also had a meeting with Matthew. We only saw once. We didn't see much after that. Apparently Matthew was saying the same stuff to Amber that he was saying to A.D., and AD found out about it because Amber's like, oh, yeah, me and Matthew were really connecting with really clicking. And AD is like, oh, yeah, what's he been saying to you? And she says the stuff verbatim that Matthew has said to AD. Boom. Episode one ends. Episode one concludes. We move on to episode two. So at the start of episode two, we meet a, I was going to say a new character. We meet somebody new. His name is Jeremy. Jeremy is your stereotypical, my least favorite type of man. He is obviously the class clown. He's joking on everybody. Blah, 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 blah. He won't stop. He won't let jokes die. Not really my thing. Not really my thing. Got to be 100% honest. I'm not into it. But it starts off, the first person that Jeremy gets to connect with in the pods is Sarah Ann. Him and Sarah Ann are connecting they have it out a little bit. They get to chop it up. She's feeling him. He's feeling her. Whatever. Uh, we're back again with our favorite. At this point, they're taking the cake for me. After episode one, Johnny and Amy are back again. He sings her this song, which I find to be very cringe. The song that his dad used to sing to him before he used to put him to bed. But he, like, sings damn near the whole song. And I'm like, please make that stop. Um... They're hitting it off. They're talking about everything. Amy opens up about the fact that she does have a brother who is on the spectrum. Her parents are older, who is on the autism spectrum, to be clear. Her parents are older, and if something were to happen to her parents, she needs to make sure that she picks a partner that is willing to care for her brother in the event that she becomes his primary caretaker. When I tell you that is such an important conversation because this... American dream model of getting old, living off your retirement, having your children fully financially support you in a separate household is not working anymore. It's not working. They've snatched people's retirements. They've snatched people's pensions. Nobody really has the money to care for their own household as well as their elderly parents. So you do need to discuss with your partner in the event that we need to take somebody in due to old age or due to ailment. Is that something you're ready to do? So I love the fact that Amber touched on that. And I fully believe it is because the fact that she is a Latina woman, because she is a person of color, she needs to know that information. Um, so again, we're back with Matthew and AD. AD just find out that he was chatting, chatting, chatting the same exact things he was telling her. He was telling Amber. So we get them back in the pods. He gets them back in the pods. She's already in the pod. He walks in the pod. He says, hey. She was waiting for him. She was ready. She was looking for blood. She's like, yo. <laughs> she doesn't say that literally. But she's like, hey. Um, I'm hearing some identical things. And he's like, before he can say anything else, he's like, from Amber. So you're already fully aware. 
you're you're basically admitting that the same things you said to me, you said to Amber. You're you're basically like you're not even gonna try to fight me on it. You're admitting the same things you said to me, you said to Amber. He takes a moment. He's being like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, this is this is just so difficult to me. Blah 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 blah. And he goes back into his tactics of manipulation where he tries to appeal logically to try and get you to ignore the facts. So he's like, oh, you know, and you probably were confused when you talked to Amber because you really thought we had a, a thing going, right? And then that kind of made you feel bad, right? Like, obviously, we're pointing out the obvious. And this is exactly why I will always say time and time again, I never, ever, ever advocate for the weirdo, super quiet in the corner type of men. Because when I tell you they're being quiet because there's nothing going on in that head but evil. There's nothing up there but evil thoughts, evil plans, and bad vibes. And this is what these quiet men do. They lay in wait for you and they play you with another woman and then and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. This has nothing to do with Love is Blind. But I literally had that quiet, cool, laid back, mysterious man. Literally, I had a man tell me, oh, the things, you know, I'm telling you I've never told anyone before. Don't you know I found out a mere months later that he had told everything he told to me and more to another mutual friend of ours that he was trying to talk to at the same time he was trying to talk to me? Right. Right. Thank you. Never a good thing. Um, but basically, AD is over it. Like, it seems towards the end of it that she's like, oh, you know, well, blah, 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 blah. And he tries to flip it on her as well, which I'm like, after he did that, I'm like, okay, wrap this up. But he's saying to her, oh, you know, you know, how do you think I feel when you're here connecting with other men? And how do you think that makes me feel? And, you know, I'm jealous and I know you're talking to other people. No. Mm -mm, it's not gonna work so they get through that clay and ad are back again clay walks in immediately on hands and knees and that's just how we like him he's like girl i'm so sorry i know what i said i know what i did that's my fault da, 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 da. do you know ad immediately goes into talking about what's going on with her and matthew clay is sitting there you know on hands and knees like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry ad was like Word, because I was connecting with somebody in here, and why I find out he's trying to play me? Clay gets so upset, and he's like, "Girl, what that got to do with me?" And that's a valid question. I'm not gonna lie. If we're even if we are, we know that we're dating multiple people. Don't come in here talking to me about what you're going through with somebody else. This ain't nobody else, girl. This is about me and you. If I'm trying to talk to my baby father, I'm trying to talk to my baby father. I'm not trying to talk about nobody else and what they got going on. But what I didn't like about Clay, he became very aggressive. He's very loud. He's cussing. He's screaming. He's pacing around the room, which very much gave me, like, are you upset and you want to hit her? But because you can't hit her, you're pacing around the room? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to accuse anyone of being an abuser because I don't know that man. But that made me quite uncomfortable. So then AD goes and tells Amber, hey, the same things that he that Matthew was saying to you, he was saying to me. Amber, it's a moment where she was like, I'm living my worst dreams. And she goes, slay. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, that moment had me cracking up. Had me cracking up. And from their last talk, it almost seems like AD is going to let what Matthew did go but we're in for a surprise. So we then move on. We are introduced to new pe two new people, Brittany and Kenneth. Brittany is a former teacher. She is 24 years old. Kenneth is a middle school principal. He's 25. Why are you on a dating show at 24? Like, did you give real life a chance? But then that also made me think about the fact that we used to be watching shows like Flavor of Love. Uh, what was that show with those two brothers? Something in Chance. Uh, I love New York and thinking about the fact that like these people were in 
if I'm not mistaken, like their early, mid, and late 20s. So this is not a peculiar thing, but I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Um, Brittany is white, Kenneth is black. Immediately, they talk about childhood trauma. Kenneth's mother died from cancer when he was a child. Um, I believe Brittany's father died from alcoholism when he was when she was a child so we see them really have a moment but they do seem to have chemistry and they are the i feel like every dating show has it they are the conservative christian couple we see johnny and amy again our prince charming our our uh uh our amiga okay um johnny slips up and says that he loves amy and doesn't take it back he doubles down he's like yeah girl i love you then we're back again Jimmy and Chelsea. Um, something about Chelsea is very off. In this episode, I'm sure you have seen the TikToks and the tweets by now. Chelsea says, I've been told that I look like MGK's wife. Megan Fox? Now, first of all, referring to the illustrious Megan Fox as MGK's wife? Absolutely crazy. Absolutely insane. You've lost your mind. But also, you don't look like Megan Fox, my love. And a lot of people have been coming from the side of like fat phobia because Chelsea is heavier. To say like, oh, she doesn't look like Megan Fox because, you know, she's big or whatever. Big or not, my love, she's a pretty girl. Let's start there. She's a very pretty girl. You just don't look like Megan Fox. Um, but what disturbs me is once she says that, you can see Jimmy's interest, like, really peak. Like, I feel like as soon as she was like, oh, I've been told I look like Megan Fox, all of a sudden he's really into her. He's really feeling her. He, he really wants to take it all the way. Which I'm like, okay, we're doing a lot. Jimmy with Jessica again, he's not feeling her. He's not feeling her. I don't believe Jimmy is really feeling Jessica. They get to talk a little bit and the whole time, he just seems kind of out of it. He seems like he doesn't really want to talk to her. He seems like he's just not that into it. But I will never defend a man who seems like he's not that into it when he's still choosing to stay there. He's still feeding her, I won't say lies, because maybe they weren't lies, but he's still telling her, I'm into you, I'm feeling you, you know, you're my girl, you're my gal, whatever, whatever, I feel this connection, I want to talk to you, whatever. So, I don't care what it seems like, it's about what it is. And the fact is, you're still talking to this girl. So, it's going to be what it is. Uh, we have our fave, well, he's our fave, Trevor and Chelsea again. They meet up, they have some sweet moments. And then finally, episode two, we have our first proposal in the show. Johnny proposes to Amy. He confesses his love. He says he feels the connection. He bends down on one knee. He proposes to Amy. Amy says yes. The episode two ends with Matthew and AD. I forgot to tell you that Amber, once she found out about what was going on, she left. Like, she didn't have another conversation with Matthew or nothing. She left. And that's exactly what AD should have did. She should have went in that pod and said, I found out what you were doing with Amber. It's over. She decided to have another conversation. He has these crocodile tears. Oh, my God. This is so hard. You know, she's like, are you sad because Amber is gone? He doesn't reply. He doesn't reply. He says, everyone is going to hate me now because I've broken someone's heart on national television. Even AD, like, she's going to walk out the room and he says this. She turns around because you're worried about, again, your priority is Amber. Because he's talking about Amber. He said, I broke her heart on national television. And she's like, you're worried about breaking her heart. You just broke mine. And he's like, oh, yeah, and yours too. But again, your focus is on the people that's watching you on television instead of us that's here with you right now. So... AD walks out and Matthew, once he sees that AD is gone, he runs out the room. He runs back to like the men's quarters and he says, I'm going to get Amber. Surprise, surprise. We're not surprised. We really are not. So that wraps up episode two. 
episode three, we see Johnny and Amy get engaged. It's very cute. It's very natural. I really do want to know what the wardrobe budget for Love is Blind is. Because if she picked it out, fine. If that's her style, love it. She literally has on a dress from Forever 21. A dress that, like, went triple platinum in Forever 21. Like, everybody has that dress. I never got it. It was never my style. But I know so many people that still have that dress. Um, that segues into Clay sitting down uh, with his friends. And he's crying. He's crying. He's like, oh, my God. I want my girl. I want my girl. He's crying. He's crying. He's crying. And then he gets in the room with AD and he's acting like everything is cool. They're cheery. They're ha ha ha. He he he. AD was really only into Clay because Matthew didn't work out. She wasn't feeling Clay like that until Matthew didn't work out. All of a sudden, we're, we're team Clay. We're black love. We're black excellence. Girl, bye. <laughs> um, and then he's telling... AD like oh yeah you know I was just super triggered you know I'm working to get better for you blah 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 um AD is like oh yeah I got a lot of love for you and then she tells Clay you know you're getting so much better you're getting so much better you don't know that and there's so many times where I have to remind myself and I have to remind other women even in the moment where you're feeling happy and giddy and special and whatever you do not know that man. You don't know that nigga from nowhere to be saying he's getting better. How do you know? <sighs> AD and Clay were, they were just, by episode three, they were pissing me off. Um, we see Kenneth and Amy again. They're still very cute. They're very electric. The only thing is, I don't care about an interracial couple, but it seems like that had both of them on their toes. Like, they both seem to be acting a little weird because of that. Um, Jeremy and Sarah Ann are meeting up again. Jeremy is still a class, count, a class clown. They start talking about lifestyle and politics. Jeremy brings up something very important. He's like, you know, I, I want these big Christmases, these big Thanksgivings, these big all of this. But I had to realize it's my turn to do all this. And I'm like, damn. I had to realize that too. Like realizing that I am of the age of the person that's supposed to be putting on the events. Crazy. Sarah Ann, we don't delve deep into her ethnicity because she's very POC, but she doesn't talk about exactly what she is. So I don't know what she is, but they talk about politics and Sarah Ann admits that she is both conservative. She said she's conservative, her words, I'm a patriot. That's what she says verbatim. And then she says, he asks her, are you pro-choice or pro-life? Like, how, what's your stance on abortion? She's like, I'm pro-life. You lost me. You lost me, babe. I'm not even going to lie to you. You lost me. You lost me so bad. Anyway, um, episode three is another proposal. Kenneth and Britt. He bends down on one knee. He's telling her, you know, professing his love. He proposes. Brittany says, yes. Now, we're back to the war on Jimmy. Jimmy's first pod is with Jessica. He still seems very agitated. She, you know, she's talking. She's trying to crack jokes. She's trying to talk about stuff. He doesn't really seem like he wants to be there. He doesn't really seem like he's really into her. However, when he gets in the pod, after Jessica, he has Chelsea. And Chelsea's again crying because of the whole marital situation, whatever, whatever. And Jimmy says to Chelsea, oh, you should feel better because your news was the least heaviest. Now, he is referring to... Jessica telling Jimmy that she has a daughter. And Jimmy pretty much not taking it well. So Jimmy's telling Chelsea, oh, your news was the least heaviest. And he had already admitted earlier to Jessica that he had never been with a woman that challenged him or that really expected much of him or that really laid it on thick for him. 
So it seems like Jimmy is your stereotypical just man that is very lazy in love. Like he doesn't want to be better. He doesn't want to grow. He doesn't want to do any of that. He just wants something super simple. And all of this, Chelsea key keying in this man's face, laughing and smiling and all these other things. I can't help but think that Trevor deserves better. Our juice head king deserves better. Episode three wasn't really much. It ends off with Jessica being upset that Jimmy is unsure um, and that she knows that he's talking to other people and she really wants him to commit because she has all these feelings. She's really jumping the gun. And there's not much to Jimmy to be impressed with. Like, he doesn't have a sexy voice. He doesn't do anything interesting. Like, he hasn't... He's leading her on and he's saying little things, but nothing to, like, have you fluttering. Like, it's stuff that any man is going to lie to you about. So that's the end of episode three. We're on to episode four. Episode four, the ladies are having a talk in their corner, their quarters, and one character that we never get to meet, her name is Mackenzie, admits to both peeing in the bathtub and peeing in the pool. Very disturbing. Uh, we start off this episode with Sarah Ann and Jeremy again. I'm not really liking them. I'm not really impressed with Jeremy, to be honest. Um, but they're just having nasty conversations. Now we're to the point where all the conversations are pretty much sexual. So I'm not really interested. I can tell they just want a hunch. Um, then we see Laura with Jeremy. And... Laura, I don't think we had met her before, but Laura is a diva in every sense of the word. From the moment she walks out on that show to the moment episode six is over, Laura is giving it to the girls. I'm talking hair. I'm talking makeup. I'm talking outfits. I'm talking the things that Laura is telling the other girls. You can tell she's that girl in her city. You can tell that Laura is is the one, never the two, point blank in the period. Um, so Laura ends up crying because of her feelings, quote unquote, for Jeremy, whatever. I don't really pay much attention to it. And then we have Clay and AD again. Clay and AD again. Clay comes in, he's like, girl, I was crying over you. Blase, blase, blah. They're being so giddy, so lovey dovey. And I'm just like, how did we arrive here? How did we recover from such disrespect in order to keep this going? I have no clue. I have no clue. I have no idea. I'm very unsure of what is going on right now. I'm not really sure what is happening with Clay and AD. Um, but he goes in there, he's saying all these things, he's doing all these things, whatever. But what I will say, and let me say this before we move any further, I support black women no matter how they look. I do not lean into, lean into the societal pressure that black women have to look their best every day, all day. But AD, that's the best wig you could get. That's the best. And you're going to see it throughout all six episodes. The leave out is left out. Why do you have a... I'm assuming if you have a leave out that that's a sew-in. Or it might be a you part wig. Why do you have a leave out? Why do you have a sew-in? Where's the frontal? Where's the closure? Absolutely unacceptable. There's, there's no way. There's no way possible. Whatever though. So now we get to Kenneth and Brittany. They say something that makes me very uncomfortable. Again, as I said it before, they are interracial. This is a black man and a white woman. Brittany says he identifies as a black male, but I see him for what he is on the inside. If he's a black male on the outside, I think he's a black male on the inside. So what what do you mean by that? I didn't like those those racial undertones, but we do see the moment where they meet up and it is very uncomfortable. 
I don't feel like the chemistry is there. I feel like it's weird. They're not really like, they kiss a little bit, they hug, but when they go to sit down next to each other, and I can understand that maybe because they're strangers, essentially, but they go to sit down next to each other. He's not touching her. He's not holding her. She's not touching, she's not holding him. Like, it's very weird, it's very uncomfortable. And I'm just like, please, make it stop, please. So then we have Trevor and Chelsea again. Um, they exchanged gifts, which was a very sweet moment. Uh, he gave her, remember he said he has a dog named Chelsea. So he has his dog's leash, which is Chelsea and it has a heart around it. And he gave it to her. I mean, I wouldn't, but <laughs> sure. We are back again with Jimmy and Jessica. Jessica gives Jimmy a letter that she wrote over two years ago that she said she would give to the man that she believed would be her husband. He read the letter and essentially said to her, well, I don't know if I can be that for you. And when I tell you, rightfully so, Jessica is pissed. Jessica is pissed. She's furious. She's letting him know. By the time you decide that you want me, I may not want you. If I get to the point where I feel so secure in this love, in this relationship, where I give you a letter that I wanted to give to my husband and you read it and you say, well, I don't know, girl. That might not be me. I think it may be time to break up. I I'm no love expert, but I'm pretty sure it may be time to break up. Um, so she's going off on him. She's, she's giving him one. Then immediately, uh, Jimmy meets up with Chelsea. Jimmy ends up telling Chelsea that he loves her. He says, I love you. He says it to Chelsea. Mind you, Jessica had, had just poured out her heart. Jessica had basically just told this man, I'm in love with you. I love you. I want to be with you. Jessica did everything but propose. Jimmy gets in the pod with Chelsea and he says, I love you. The girls get back to their quarters. Um, Laura, love my girl Laura down. Chelsea goes to tell Laura what happened. Laura goes to, she's not being messy either. She goes to Jessica and she says, hey girl, I can't give you the particulars, but this is not your man. Jessica has a whole moment. She breaks down. She's crying. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I need to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But he wasn't giving you anything anyway. No matter what a man is saying, we have to pay attention to what he's doing. And what Jimmy was doing was a very stereotypical breadcrumbing. A little crumb here, a little crumb there. And you just keep, do not mistake all these crumbs for a fully put together meal. I don't care what a man is saying. He's either going to give you a meal or he's going to give you nothing. Do not mistake these breadcrumbs for a meal. So, um, Jessica's having a whole moment as she rightfully should. And this is also the episode where AD and Clay get to meet up and it is very uncomfortable. They're making a lot of like, ooh, ah, oh my God, ee, ah. I don't like it. And Clay is like, we gonna have some beautiful dark babies. I just feel like black people that are really pro-black would never say something like that. We gonna have some beautiful dark babies? Like, huh? So their whole thing is uncomfortable. Her wig is even worse in the engagement than it was before. The dress that she's wearing after doing all of this, oh, you know, the body doesn't matter, the body doesn't matter. He basically hypersexualizes her. She turns around, shows him her butt. He's like, oh, you got a lot of back. She's like, I do got a lot of back. It was very uncomfortable from the beginning to the very end. Didn't like it. Hated it. Hated it, actually made me anti-black. I didn't like it at all. Not even one bit. It ends off with Jessica confronting Jimmy, which again, these women are giving these men too much conversation, too much time, but she looks amazing. She looks amazing. She has on this black 
a short long sleeve like dress that has like some cutouts she has on the strappy heeled sandals she's looking hot if I do say so myself, she's looking smoking hot. She's like, you ruined this opportunity for me. Uh, whatever, whatever. She's like, oh, God bless. And she said something where people was like, oh, she kind of ate with that. She didn't. She was like, oh, when you see what you missed out on, you're going to be sick. You're going to be sick. I mean, I mean, she's not lying. Like, she is a very beautiful, very pretty woman. But I don't think we want the looks to matter like it was about your heart so if he wasn't compelled enough by who you were and the type of person that you were i don't think your looks are really gonna matter and i do think his his a little controversial take i think jessica said that as a shot at chelsea i think she was trying to take a dig at chelsea like saying like oh i look better than her when you see that you chose her over me you're gonna be sick Okay, girl, a little, a little fat phobic here, a little fat phobic here, but sure. That's the end of episode four. Episode five, things get spicy. Things, things get a little, a little spicy. You hear what me say? Just, just a little spicy. Basically, the whole premise of the beginning of episode five, Chelsea has now gotten admissions of love from both Trevor and Jimmy. So she has to pick. I love the way they shot it, the way they edited it. We didn't know who she was gonna choose. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what the tea was, what anything was about. So we don't know what's gonna happen at this point, but she ends up in a pod with Jimmy. Jimmy, again, admits his love, he can't live without her, he can't survive without her. He gets down on one knee, he proposes, she says yes. She says yes. She says yes to Jimmy. Chelsea accepts a proposal of marriage from Jimmy. So, because she accepted the proposal of marriage from Jimmy, she has to go and break the news to Trevor. So, of course, she gets in there with Trevor. And one thing my girl Chelsea loves, tears. She's going to be a raisin by the time she leaves. Because every minute of every second of every day, tears, 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 tears. Before she can even sit down, she has to admit everything to Trevor. Um, Trevor reads her. Trevor asks Chelsea, so you chose a man that couldn't decide between you and another woman over a man that knew for a fact the only person he wanted was you. Oh! 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 Call the police because there's been a murder scene. I would rather have my foot fall off on a roller coaster than to have a man say that to me. But oh, he read her bad, but he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. She's crying, she's crying, she's crying. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Then he asks her the ultimate question. Trevor asks Chelsea, if I went first, if I had proposed to you first, would you have said yes? She's silent. So basically from this, from her attitude, from how she's acted, and from the shock on her face every time a man expressed his feelings to her, Chelsea just wanted anybody that wanted her. She was a very deeply insecure woman that whoever picked her, she's picking them. No good, babe. No good, babe. And then we go on to see Jeremy ends up picking Laura over Sarah Ann. Jeremy and Laura, I do not get. Laura is a baddie, all tens across the board, a baddie. Jeremy is a class clown that admitted he only wears button-up Henleys because he has a thick neck. All of his shirts were those three button-up cotton long sleeve t-shirts or a button-up shirt. He dressed weird. I didn't like him, wasn't into him, not feel him at all. Um, but Jeremy and Sarah Ann, they didn't really have it out. They had a very classy, very nerdy little breakup. She went on about her business. So then after that, we see the official meetup and proposal of Jimmy and Chelsea. 
it was bad. It was bad. It was, it was like, it was, I already told you guys I was not a fan of Clay and AD's proposal. Chelsea and Jimmy? Bad. It was bad. It was horrible. There was no chemistry. You can tell. They were both kind of looking at each other like, oh, that's what you look like? And then, you know how they do like the little confessional? Jimmy says, I'll admit, she did lie about how she looked. She doesn't look anything like Megan Fox. Not too much on Chelsea. He's not wrong. But I don't know. That's, yeah. And that's why I feel like love is not really blind. <laughs> but that was so funny coming from Jimmy because Jimmy has a state trooper haircut. Like, if you got pulled over by a state trooper in the DMV area, nine times out of ten, he looks like Jimmy to be honest. Chelsea is immediately being very insecure. Oh, how do I look? Oh, you know, what do you think about how I look? Da, 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 da. And Jimmy says, I can work with that. That's like basically saying, well, you don't look like the worst thing in the world. Um, so yeah, finally, the final engagement of the show is Laura and Jeremy. Um, their engagement was cute. It was sweet. I just don't think that's a good match. Like, a class clown with a baddie? It, I swear, this is not a movie. This is not a movie. Like, in real life, this stuff does not work out. So, episode five segues into once they have all the couples that are going to get engaged, they've gotten engaged, they all go to a resort in the Dominican Republic. And it follows them, like, all throughout the resort. So the first people we unfortunately have to see in that footage, Chelsea and Jimmy. Um, this is their first day in the Dominican Republic. They're going there immediately after they get engaged. Immediately, Jimmy is asking her, oh, you told me you weren't gonna tell anyone when I told you that I loved you. But I'm hearing from people that you went in there and you yelled it. Are you telling me that I was supposed to be a secret? That we were supposed to be a secret? That this love is supposed to be a secret? Are you kidding me? And then he immediately goes into, uh, oh, you know, this is so hard because I did have another person that I had connected with. Imagine your first day of a vacation and your man is talking about somebody else and how hard it was for him to choose between you and somebody else. I would rather bite my own hand off. Goodness gracious. And then also at their engagement, as soon as they have like a sweet moment where they sit down, as soon as they sat down, Jimmy says to Chelsea, oh, you know, I was thinking about going home. Can we have a moment to celebrate our engagement before you just start talking about stuff? Gosh. Um, and then Jimmy goes into trying to demonize Jessica. He refers to what Jessica said about her looks and that he's going to gag and... Um, you know, Chelsea is again being insecure. Oh, you know, well, how do I look? Well, you know, are you happy to see me? Blah, 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 blah. He tells her, you know, you're pretty good looking. Girl. Then we switch over to Laura and Jeremy. The class clown and the popular girl. Stereotype. Laura can't stand him. He's playing around too much. He's jumping in the pool fully clothed. He's doing all these things. Laura cannot stand that. Laura is the definition of grown and sexy. And Jeremy is just not. He's just not that guy. And Laura needs that guy. Um, then we see Johnny and Amy. They're living in their glory. They're the cutest. They're connected. They're hugging. They're touching. They're kissing. They're talking. They're joking. Love them. If, if, if Johnny and Amy have 10 fans, I'm one of them. If Johnny and Amy only have one fan, it's me. If Johnny and Amy have no fans... I've died. Thank you very much. Then we have AD and Clay. He is still hypersexualizing her. Oh, your body. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. I mean, she took off her clothes and it was like this and her in a bathing suit. She does a little dance for him. I don't like it. From beginning to end, I don't like it. So the whole time... In DR, things are not going good. 
things are not going good, things are not going well. You can tell with Jimmy and Chelsea that they're not feeling each other. They're not feeling, they're forcing it. And I won't just put this on Jimmy because Chelsea too, she's forcing it. They're barely looking at each other. They're making all these asinine jokes. Like they don't really want to be there together. So that's the end of episode five. Episode six starts up and they are still in, uh, they're still in the DR. They do like a recap of like their first nights together and they're like talking about the physical connection and that's so hot. And I was like, I don't want to hear about this. Like I'm too, I'm too Muslim for this. Um, I think the first people that we see after all the recaps, we see Laura and Jeremy. Laura's like, oh my God, you play too much. That's how she really feels because you shouldn't be with that man because he's a joke. He's a joke. I don't like him. Clay and AD are sitting down having a conversation and a if Clay did not have enough red flags flying, oh, they were all over the place in here. It was a parade. It was a parade. Let me tell you that. So they're having a conversation um, because AD, she's super thick. She's super pretty, her body T. But again, she's a former dancer. She's a former cheerleader. So they work out a lot. They dance a lot. So you know her body is going to be right and tight. Um, AD is like, oh, you know, you know, what would you say to me? Like if I got out of weight, Clay comes in and was like, that'll never happen. I'll tell you, AD, you need to get up and get in that MF and gym. Huh? And then AD is naturally so she's taken aback because she's like, okay, let's relax. But he's like, oh no, I would never let that happen. Like you need to be in the gym. She's like, okay, what about in the event that I become pregnant and naturally my body will stretch and I'll have some time where I'm out of shape. He's like, oh, I'll be in that gym, you know, every day of your pregnancy with you because you, you, you got to keep that body right and tight. So she's basically pushing back on him. Is like, listen, that's not nice. I don't want you talking to me like that. I don't want you saying that to me, whatever. He's like, okay, maybe I could have presented it better. Maybe you could just not say that at all. Thanks. Um, but again, even more than hypersexualizing her, he's fetishizing her body. He is. He really, and he's become so attached to that fetish that in the event that if she were to look different, or not even look different, just gain some weight. He would like attack her into losing weight. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not buying that. I don't like that at all. Clay is like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just working on getting better. They start, you know, to get a little bit, of, get a little bit deep. And he's like, oh, you know, I want to be better. I want to, you know, things are hard for me, and you know, I have so much trouble with my ego. And Ad says to him, admitting that is powerful. And I want to push back on that because I feel like as women, we get a man who is a tad bit in touch with his emotion when really that man is using his emotion to manipulate us or that emotion because it's really fake. Um, and we're like, oh my God, you know, admitting that you want to be better is like so powerful. It's not. The power is in doing the work. Anybody can admit anything. A, a, a mass murderer can get on here and be like, I'm a mass murderer. He's not powerful for admitting that. He's powerful for changing that. So no, we do not reward a fish for swimming. There's nothing powerful about you admitting the problems that you have. The power is in doing the work to change them. Thank you. But then there's like a moment that really was kind of a tearjerker for me. AD admits, she says, really, truly something I don't think I deserve because I don't have it. She's referring to love. And I'm so happy, even though I have my reservations about him, Clay pushed back on that and was like, why don't you think you deserve love? And she says, because I don't have it. So it's like, naturally, I don't think it's something that I deserve because if I deserved it, I think I would have it. That is a feeling and that is a moment. And as a person who has been there before, being able to push past that feeling of like, oh, I don't deserve love because I don't have it. Just because you don't have it when you want it doesn't mean you don't deserve it. Does not mean you don't deserve it, okay? Um, 
But yeah, that was a moment. Chelsea is still being insecure. Chelsea asks Jimmy, what did you notice on my body first? This man hesitated for so long and then said, your teeth. And then as she prompts him and prompts him and prompts him, he ends up saying, oh, I noticed you have big boobs. He's called her good looking. It was very painful for him to try and say, oh, you know, you're pretty, you're good looking. I like how you look. He never calls her beautiful. He never says the first thing I noticed when I saw you was your beauty, none of that. And that's exactly what she's looking for. But they have a moment on the beach where he asked her like, what is your normal type? And she was like, big muscular guys. Jimmy is anything but big and muscular, babe. So they're having all this back and forth about, do you really want me? Do you really want to be here? Uh, and it's Chelsea that's prompting all of these, do you really want me? Do you really want to be here? When I think Chelsea is projecting because I don't think she really wants to be there with him either. I don't think Jimmy really wants her, but I also don't think she really wants Jimmy. Like, I think she saw that little man and she said, oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> I don't think she was really into Jimmy at all. At all. And the girls that get it, get it. If you've been in a situation where you were scared of being the bad guy, so you didn't want to break up with a man, you will create problems in order for him to break up with you. And I think that's what Chelsea is doing. So finally, we get to the part where they always have a scene when they're at the resort where all the couples that were engaged meet up. So they all meet up, they're outside, everybody meets everybody, and things quickly take a turn because Jimmy says to Chelsea, oh my God, AD is stacked. Chelsea, in her moment of being flustered, tries to go along with it and said, oh my God, yeah, AD is stacked. She says, hey, AD, Jimmy says you're stacked. Huh? So AD kind of turns around. She's like, yeah, huh, huh. yeah, yeah. I'm like, and then she's like, AD, what do, you, what do you do to get that butt? And AD is like, squats in Jesus, girl, squats in Jesus. And you can clearly tell that Chelsea feels a way about it. She feels weird about it. But in the moment, she just goes along with it. And that's why sometimes you just have to grab that man by the back of the neck and you got to say, hey, that's unacceptable. That's why all these conversations of, would you look at a girl's butt along with your man? Hell no. Absolutely not. I would rather drink bleach than I have a, my man think it's okay to talk about another woman's body in front of me. Because you want to go low, I'm going to hell. Thank you. Um... But at this point, Chelsea is insecure. She starts up with her BS. Uh, Amy comes over there and Chelsea is like, oh my God, I feel so sick. Calm down, babe. Just tell them what happened. Um, and by this time, they're drunk. Everybody's like pissy drunk out of their minds. You can tell how they're walking, how they're talking, what's going on. And then the guys are sitting in the area, the girls are sitting in the area. AD comes over to Clay and Jeremy is like, oh, Laura told me to, I forget what it's called, but pretty much Laura joked and was like, hey, Jeremy, go over to AD and slap her boob. And so Clay and AD are like, what? Why would she tell you to do that? And rightfully so, Clay is upset because I don't want to hear you and your spouse conspiring for you to slap my girl's boob. Like, I don't care what's going on. Um, so Laura's like, oh my God, it was just a joke. He made it this big thing, da, da 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 So Laura's like, oh, I don't know why Clay would make it such a big deal. Like he needs to calm down. AD says, well, no, he doesn't need to calm down because you are joking, quote unquote, about your man slapping my boob. And I'm Clay's woman. Like, of course he's going to feel away. Hello. And that's why I say, Non-Muslims be operating crazy sometimes. And I can't even say non-Muslims. White people operate crazy sometimes. So Jeremy gets upset with Laura. He's like, oh, I'm ready to go home. 
She's like, oh, back to the hotel. He's like, no, home. And that's why those goofy niggas are never where it's at. Because one little problem, and they don't know how to operate because they think everything is a joke. And the second it's not a joke and there's confrontation, it's time to get important, they can't handle it. After that, we see Chelsea and Jimmy back in the room. They're having it out. Chelsea's crying. Jimmy's frustrated. She tells him that was inappropriate. She's like, oh, I love you. He's like, I love you too. She's trying to make up, but then she's also like, just accept it. He's like, it's not fair to me, blah, 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 blah. They have it out. They kiss and make up. Chelsea's crying. Jimmy's frustrated. Episode ends. So that is the wrap up for episodes one through six, season six of Love is Blind. This is something new on the channel. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear how you felt about it. Um, I would love your feedback of the video, maybe even your critique, but be nice because I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about mush. Mm -hmm. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we will be back when the rest of the episodes air and I'll be back with my review of those. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I wanna hear what you thought about the couples, what you thought about the season, what you thought about the girls. Leave it all down in the comments below. And I will see you guys for the next video. Bye. Assalamu alaikum.